Uh, Billy Tiller is the CEO and founder of the Grower Information Services Cooperative. It's a producer-owned data cooperative uh, assisting agricultural producers, one of the few in the country, I believe, maybe one of the first ones. And of course, he has a, a, a lot of other roles that uh, it would take the whole panel to read through all the other things he's done in ag tech. So I'll leave it at that. Billy Tiller from Lubbock, Texas, one of the very well-known figures in ag tech. A couple of minutes, each of you, to introduce yourselves uh, tell us who you are and um, and how you come to the space. And why don't we start with you, Billy? Sure. It's a pleasure to be here, Roger. And good to be with you again. Uh, I'm actually a large cotton grain producer west of Lubbock, Texas, so I'm very close to Kim, uh, maybe 55 miles west. I raise uh, cotton grain sorghum, had cattle at one time. But anyway, I've been involved in ag tech since about 2005, and uh, the Innovation Hub at Texas Tech has been a key part of this. So being involved with Kimberly, getting her on here today is very important to me. We've had offices, uh, the Grower Information Services has had offices at the Innovation Hub, I think since 2018. So exciting place to be. Thanks, Roger. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Billy, why don't you take it away? Okay, let me, I want to talk for just a minute about GIC. This was a data co-op founded in uh, late 2012. Sort of like uh, Roger had said in his introduction of me, it is the only data co-op today that I'm aware of. We work with farmers. It's a lot, a lot like any other co-op. So if it's a corn cooperative, if it's an input cooperative, we operate the same way. The only difference is we're working with data and we're also focusing now on sustainability. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I've been involved with ag tech really for around 20 years. Uh, ag production, broadband, telecom, with all that said, I want to talk to you about a specific project to give you an idea of literally what we do at GSC. So this is an example of a GSC project. This is the Twin Platte Natural Resource District project. And the interesting thing here was we had a group of farmers uh, on about 320,000 acres in Nebraska that were part of the Twin Platte Natural Resource District. They're the actual regulatory body that monitors the irrigation there, but they didn't really have a way to monitor the irrigation specifically at the field. So GIC developed technology and basically software to use the electric smart meter to actually calculate irrigation on about 3000 wells. We have adoptions in that area of over 50%, 54. It's unheard of in an ag tech project. So we're very proud of that. And I think the reason we have that kind of adoption is a lot to do with the fact that uh, you know we share with trust when you're sharing with the cooperative and then to third parties because we get very involved with them on what's going on and what it means to share data. Uh, I think today, since we're talking about Texas and we're using utilizing and focusing specifically on Texas Tech and their innovation hub, I want to focus on them a little bit. And and jumping in, jumping into that, you see the partners there. We have AgriBlocks, which is a software company founded by Mark Cox, is very involved with us. Uh, and then of course, TwinPlat, but we also have the Innovation Hub. And, and as we have the Innovation Hub, we began to look at resources we didn't have or couldn't tap into before. So our offices are actually located there on the campus of Texas Tech with them. And this is an example to slide up now of literally where the hub's located, kind of an area surrounded around there that's the area of influence that we think we can really go into, but we have big problems. And I, I don't want, I, I say the word problem and then I want to change it. We have big challenges. We have tremendous opportunities that are literally facing us. And that left slide is the Ogallala Aquifer, also known as the High Plains Aquifer. It's also the aquifer I work with in Nebraska. And it's underground water brought to the surface for, uh, for irrigation. And if you'll notice, we have tremendous depletion in that circle, which is the area around the innovation of so we have to find unique and innovative ways to continue to perform agriculture duties out here and grow crops. And the way to do it is to be, make better use of water, which I'm afraid we've already cashed that check, but we also have to find ways to grow crops with less water, look for different yield results. Uh, it's a challenging problem. And along those lines, we get into sustainability. So it's very exciting to really see what we have here in the backyard of Texas Tech. I want to say one thing, Roger, as we finish up here, because the long history of startups, almost 40 years. And one of the, you know, one of the things that happens is you need support. You need partners, you need friends, you need people that can help you. It's been my goal since I began to work with tech nearly 20 years ago to see these things come to pass. 
And so this is this is not only a support of the university. They finally have taken a step. This is going to help with funding. And you and I both know, in the end, you can't do much without funding. So I'm really excited about what's going on here. Kim, great presentation. Roger, I'll turn it over to you. All right. Well, thanks very much. It's a lot of information. It looks like you've got a real uh, ecosystem you're building out there in West Texas. This is really exciting. And I wish you the best of luck. I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more from you. Um, well, with that, uh, I want to thank you, panelists, for being here, for presenting uh, about the, uh, the data cooperative, uh, the fund, uh, the innovation center, and, and also um, the, uh, the controlled environment ag startup. And with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and conclude the webinar at this point. Thank you very much.